Tears of the Kingdom has just been released and there is so much to explore. To ensure that you will have the tools one needs to properly experience the entirety of this massive world, both in terms of knowledge and abilities, here are a flurry of early game tips and items that you need to have. We'll start with a few quick general tips, and then hop into some more in-depth ones covering how to unlock the rest of your abilities, as well as some easy to find high-end starting gear. Now, most of these tips will have to do with once you've completed the Great Plateau area of this game, Great Sky Island. Although one thing you'll want to make sure to nab before jumping off the island is these warm greaves, helping immensely for the first few cold areas you'll adventure to. Now into the general tips. First, stealth is your friend. Tears of the Kingdom has much larger enemy groups than Breath of the Wild. In addition to the decreased weapon durability, it's always the best choice to go for at least one stealth strike before beginning the battle proper. Now, this might sound obvious, but once the true battle does begin, always fight with a fused weapon, no matter the scenario. Not only do they deal more damage, their range is extended to ridiculous amounts, and their durability is increased. A particularly good combo in the early game is combining two skeleton bokoblin arms, giving you a whopping 40 attack power. Cooking has had a significant upgrade in Tears of the Kingdom, and you can now go to any ingredient in your inventory and check all previous recipes that you've used it in. Some particularly good ingredients include Sunderlines, which provides some much needed relief in caves by negating the effects of gloom. Then there's the classic Mighty Bananas, who should be cooked all together to get a hefty buff to your attack power. And lastly, any items that are described as hardy, which give a full heal and then some extra hearts. For one last general tip, be sure to use and abuse the Ultra Hand and Recall ability combo by first moving an object to where you want to go and then back, and then riding it with rewind, you can get over slippery slopes and unclimbable walls with ease. This trick is particularly useful in shrines, where you can use any random item to circumpass entire puzzles. Now, once you complete the amazing tutorial that is Great Sky Island, you'll naturally feel the urge to immediately go off track and explore wherever, but you'll definitely want to complete the first part of the main quest. It only takes a few minutes, and you're awarded access to this game's version of the Sheikah Towers, letting you not only access the map, but also shooting you in the sky for a great vantage point of the surrounding area. Even more importantly, this will allow you to acquire the glider, opening up your avenues for exploring tenfold. Now, one of the first places you'll want to explore is without a doubt the Great Plateau. While it may have been the tutorial area in Breath of the Wild, it now holds some amazing loot and secrets. Not only can you find one of the strongest shields in the early game just lying around, there's also a Yiga encampment that you can raid for a fun mask and some info on their other camp locations. There's a mysterious side quest with the goddess you can begin, and another secret within the old Shrine of Resurrection. Most importantly though, the underground hole here is a great starting point to get to the auto-build ability, allowing you to save the machines that you've built so that next time you want to use it, you can just summon it instantly. Just dive down this hole, be sure to activate the light route and head directly south. You'll quickly encounter some NPCs and, after an easy boss fight with the only character in this game harder than buff Ganondorf, you'll now have the ability to instantly summon past machines, regardless of whether or not you have the parts. Now, as you continue your travels with your new abilities, be sure to help any and all NPCs you find along the road. If you're anything like me, you've gotten used to the people you meet on your adventures being almost useless in Breath of the Wild, sometimes even being so stingy to not give you anything at all. Luckily, this is not the case in Tears of the Kingdom, with many NPCs handing out multiple gifts and gratitude for completing simple tasks. One guy you'll definitely want to keep an eye on is Addison, identifiable by his constant proximity to a President Hudson sign. If you combine a few items to keep his sign up after he releases it, he'll be so grateful he won't just give you one item, not two either, 
but three entire items as a reward for the simple task. Talk about a good deal. Now I might actually start feeling bad about all the times I got him to drop his sign in the lake. Hestu is another NPC who you'll definitely need to watch out for, allowing you to exchange Korok seeds for more weapon slots. He can appear in many different places throughout Hyrule, but here's one spot he'll appear that isn't too hard to get to. Just defeat some monsters for him and those weapon slots are as good as yours. Even the best of dancers envy his choreography. One change you might not have seen coming in Tears of the Kingdom has to do with the wells you'll constantly find in ruined towns. While they never led to more than a Korok in the last game, in Tears of the Kingdom they almost always lead to a full cave system. At minimum they'll have some interesting loot, but at best they'll have an entire shrine waiting at them, so be sure to always check them out. Another cave indicator comes in the form of these blue bunnies known as bloopies. If you hit them with an arrow, they'll drop some rupees, but even if you miss, the scare will get them to run to a nearby cave in panic. These caves that they lead you to will almost always have a bubble frog inside, a legendary creature that drops a precious bubble gem after being defeated. That's it for now, but continue playing and you will find that there is so much more to this game to explore. I'll have much more Tears of the Kingdom content coming out soon on various topics, but for now, thanks for watching, and subscribe, please, maybe?